Hey everyone, welcome to 2020. We made it. Hopefully the hangover wasn't too bad from all the New Year's parties. Hopefully you recovered. We're back to the dregs of working and everything. But on that note, let's jump to some stream tech. So I haven't been streaming too much recently because of moving and stuff, but I'm getting back into the thick of it. And when I'm building my new streaming setup, I did start messing with OBS and learning it. And I'm really excited to do some coverage of that in the future on the channel. But before that, I wanted to take one more look at that old workhorse XSplit. And really what I wanted to take a look at is the latest version of XSplit. I have only been using like 3.7 and 3.8. I haven't really used the latest one that's come out. So I want to take a look at some of the cool features that I saw in that version and how they can be applied. But the real main theme of this video is for streamers, like what kind of streamer is XSplit a fit for in 2020? So I want to kick this off by saying that this is not a sponsored video. This is me just being curious and moving my hands in weird ways. But let's start off with the OBS scene importer. So this only works with classic vanilla OBS and not with slops, but basically in OBS, just export your scene collection and then use the importer and XSplit. Now this is not one-to-one, -one. it still has some bugs and kinks to be worked out. So if you have this super complex sushi dragon style set of scenes, it definitely won't import perfectly into XSplit. So the next two features I'm really excited about are ones that are useful to me as a live stream producer and as a video editor. So the first is an update to scene as a source. So now instead of selecting just a specific scene, you can also select the live scene, right? Now, in most cases, this isn't useful, right? But when you're doing a live stream production, what a lot of people do is they set up a basically preview scene, right? So this has all their camera input sources set up. And then as the biggest source, it has a loop playback. So this is basically showing what's ever live or the live scene is. Uh, it's displaying that. So the way we used to have to do this is you do an output, like a projector output into the capture card. So you lost both an output on your PC and a capture card input, which with the limited amount of inputs and outputs you have, this was really like, ugh, it sucked doing this. So the fact that now you can just do this as a source and keep those inputs free, it's amazing and it's super useful if you're live streaming events. So next is the ability to select the scene that you want to record instead of just recording only the live scene. Now this is huge, 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 huge for any streamers that are looking to diversify their income or diversify their exposure. So if you have started to see that you get more viewers, if you post clips on Twitter, post them on Instagram, post them on TikTok, and if you post highlights or clips or compilations uh, on Twitch clips or on your YouTube, uh, this will really help you with that. So basically, you can have a scene, say scene 10, right? It has your face cam, it has your gameplay feed and maybe like a camera frame, but it doesn't have all these alerts and stuff like that. And you can set it to record just that scene. So that way you get this nice clean recording that doesn't have pop-ups and profanity and things that'll get your account struck down and banned from YouTube. It's really useful for that. Or you can just have raw gameplay feed or raw face cam feed. One really cool idea I thought up of is if you have this super beast PC, you can basically set XSplit to 4K, right? And then if you have like a 4K gameplay going and a 4K camera input going, you put them in the different quadrants, right? And you record that at 4K, you use like NVENC or something, right? And then you encode with your CPU and you basically downscale the output to 1080p, 60, whatever, right? So then when you're done, you have this recording with these sections here, right? But basically, since it's in 4K and you're outputting a 1080p or 720p video to YouTube, you just basically uh, crop and resize the face cam and then you can kind of layer them on top of each other. Gives you way more flexibility in your edits and stuff. And then you combine this with having multi-track recording available, right? So now you have separate audio tracks for your game sound, if you're playing music, for alerts, for your microphone and you really can make this awesome stuff. And right now, if you watch a lot of Twitch streamers, their compilations are basically just, 
you know, Twitch clips basically compiled together. So imagine, especially if you have an editor or if you do it yourself, if you have like this raw crisp recording and all these independent audio tracks, you can make something that stands out from the rest of the pack and get to that viewership and hopefully some cash later on down the line. So speaking of NVENC, XSplit actually implemented the latest NVIDIA SDK and also implemented this GPU priority mode. So hopefully this will take less resources off your CPU and has a smoother stream and quality going forward. So another really big feature that I think will be more prevalent as time goes on is the ability to add filters or LUTs to your camera. So this is mainly for people that have a really high-end camera, you know, mirrorless camera or something with a removable lens attached to a capture card. But basically you can add this filter, there's preset filters built in, or you can take this PNG file that XSplit provides and it's actually linked to from a website and a blog post and you can tweak the camera settings and you can create this LUT. So a lot of times these LUTs are done to do like this cinematic look. So I'm pretty sure with this higher prevalence on just chatting streams, you're going to see people try and differentiate themselves by having the most cinematic looking stream or something like that. Last but definitely not least is the macro system. So macros have been updated again to add more macro functions and features and options that you can pick to automate stuff. Now, I personally think macros is the most overlooked feature of XSplit. It's so powerful in what it can do. But the truth is, is that Stream Deck also has its own macros feature built in. You can set up commands. Now, XSplit macros are different because specific sources interact with XSplit macros a certain way, but they're really useful, especially if you're trying to do complex things in your broadcast. So, you know, if you want to do all these crazy camera moves and flips and incorporate presets and animations and stuff it used to be really hard to do that like you had to time stuff and it would look a little bit jank but if you can set it up in your macros you just do it as one hockey press and you have this crazy looking stream effects my example probably isn't that great but hey it's for you creators out there to be imaginative with it so that goes back to the question who is expert for in 2020 well if you're a beginner streamer you should really just stick to using free software because you're still figuring out if you want to do this or not don't spend too much money. Now there is a free version of XSplit now, XSplit Gamecaster. Has a lot more features than before. If you bleed purple, then use Twitch Studio that has a lot of great features. It'll get you started. But for XSplit Broadcaster, who I think this is for is with the new recording features and functions, especially with multi-track audio and being able to select a specific scene. It's really great, especially with the free video editor and cue points. It's really great for content creators that are trying to diversify their uh, audiences. So a lot of streamers are finding out that, you know, one of their biggest audiences is on YouTube through compilations and their funny moments. So having things that you can give to an editor or use yourself to kind of build that audience, because right now YouTube is really good for just finding stuff. People are always searching Twitch fails, Twitch funny, stuff like that. So that's how you can get exposure. The other type of person is that content creator that's trying to differentiate themselves. So maybe they're trying to do it by adding production elements. Like these days, it's not enough anymore to just have yourself playing a game, have your webcam and have you playing unless you're incredible at the game or you're an incredible personality. Um, you need to maybe toss in gimmicks here or there just to get yourself that little boost, just to get some notice, just to get some followers going. And then you work from there. But if you're someone that's not super technically savvy and doesn't want to code and stuff like that or find scripts or read through forms then XSplit makes it really easy to set up cool production elements. Like I said, there's the LUTs, there's the preset animations, there's all this stuff that can make your stream look interesting or unique that XSplit makes really easy to set up. So I ask you, the viewers now, are you planning to add anything new to your stream? Do you think streams need some new features or some new stuff? Do they need more Dr. Disrespect levels of production? Let me know in the comments. Really excited to be covering streaming tech again. Hoping to cover a broader range of topics in 2020. If you have anything you want to know about, let me know. Just ask. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Catch you on the next video. See you later.